Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. If you're a runner and you've ever been injured and you actually went to see a doctor, you probably got some sort of lecture about the necessity of rest. You may have even been scolded for your dedication to fitness. You need to slow down. You need to calm down. You have to sit still. Has a doctor ever said any of these things to you? Well, I've had doctors tell me these sorts of things, and frankly, they all sound like the sorts of things I tell my nine-year-old son when he's had too much sugar. Often, they're uttered with the same annoyed paternalistic tone. The first thing I will tell you is that your doctor is actually thinking about your best interests when she tells you to stop all exercise. She actually believes rest is best. And just to be clear, I do believe strict rest is important after a severe injury or immediately after surgery, but only for a very brief period of time. But most athletes are so healthy and heal so quickly, they only need a matter of days of true strict rest. Athletes don't need weeks or months of strict rest. In fact, what I would argue is that the standard approach of strict immobilization and bed rest is completely counterproductive to the long-term goals of every runner who has become severely injured or has to have foot surgery. I believe runners heal differently than normal patients, and I believe normal treatments should be administered to normal patients, not runners. The first thing is that runners get stressed when they rest. Have you ever taken a long period of time off of running? Have have you ever stopped running for a week or a month? How did you feel? Did you get angry? Did you get grumpy? Did you get depressed? If so, it's really not surprising. A study published in the International Journal of Sports Medicine reported increased levels of stress hormones when athletes stop working out. Sedentary people don't get these increases in stress hormones just from inactivity. You, as a runner, react differently when you sit still. Even your brain chemistry gets thrown off. Another study published in the Annals of Behavioral Medicine reported exercise training was correlated not only with significant reductions in depressed mood and fatigue, but more importantly, reduced levels of the stress hormone cortisol when compared with those randomized to a control group. So when you're bummed out sitting around doing nothing as you recover, you may actually have higher levels of cortisol. If it's true that higher levels of cortisol and other stress hormones slow healing, then in theory, when you get stressed out when you're sitting around doing nothing, not exercising, you may take longer to heal. Now, the next thing is that movement facilitates recovery. One of the many benefits of physical activity is the tissues become better perfused. What I mean by that is that you have increased blood flow when you move any portion of your body. When you have surgery, or for that matter, even just a severe running injury, the tissue damage creates a pool of metabolic junk. You can think of it as pulverized tissue debris, which is essentially garbage in your injured foot. That garbage has to be removed. By increasing blood flow through an extremity, you can essentially flush out that garbage. If you're sitting still, then you have to rely on your white blood cells to work their way down there and gobble up all the garbage one cell at a time. Now, the third thing is that micromotion can help fractures and bone heal faster. Motion can help healing bones heal faster. A study published in the medical journal Injury reported tibial fractures, which is your shin bone, they healed about four weeks faster when micromotion was allowed compared to those healing with no motion. Now, just think about that for a second. How much fitness would you lose with an entire extra month of sitting on the couch? How much weaker and grumpier would you be? If you have a fracture, you need to think about and ask your doctor about how micromotion can help your fracture heal faster. Micromotion doesn't just help bones heal either. Motion also helps tendons, ligaments, and torn joint capsules, which are all made up largely of collagen. We know that motion can help collagen remodel and become stronger. Immobilization is the enemy of healing athletes. A study published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery reported that when ligaments are injured and immobilized, immobilization leads to a greater percentage of disorganized collagen fibrils, decreased structural properties of the healing collagen, decreased mechanical properties of the ligament substance, and even slower recovery of the resorbed insertion sites where the ligaments actually attach to bones. Of course, to you, the injured runner, that means the structures which have quote-unquote healed while you are stuck in that cast are just plain weaker than when allowed to heal with a little motion. Of course, you don't want to apply too much motion. You don't want to apply so much force you rip the healing collagen apart, but you do want to apply gentle little repetitive applications of force sufficient to stimulate remodeling of the collagen. 
There's also a theory that the repetitive slight stretching of those tissues uh, can help to increase blood flow in the area. But we're talking about micromotion, very small motions, very small forces with very small stresses. But if applied correctly, micromotion should help accelerate the healing process following a running injury, particularly if the injury happens to involve a tendon, a bone, a ligament, or a joint capsule. If that's true, it seems like it would be a good idea to have a recovery plan that involves a period of applied micromotion at the appropriate healing interval. You want to start the micromotion right when it will help you the most. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.